Hey, welcome back to part three of my message for this week. Uh, the message, I call it, Follow Me, Following God. Uh, I, I really love what God is doing. Um, so far in part one and part two, we've looked at not only the people who are following us, because regardless if you know it or not, there are people who are following you right now, so how are you going to lead those people? And then we not only looked at that, but we also looked at the importance of following and being strengthened and being lifted up by, by the people who you follow. So here, I think this is important because we're going to look a little bit deeper at the people that God is calling us to follow because God doesn't call us to follow everybody. God doesn't call us to follow uh, a vast, it, he, he wants quality over quantity. Right? He, he wants a few people who really know what they're doing rather than a big people who kind of know what they're doing. And while it's important to have a few different mentors, you need to be very careful about the type of mentors that you have. And you have to be very careful about the type of people that you let lead you in your life because the people who lead you in your life are either going to lead you to a road of success or they're going to lead you down a path to failure. And God wants you to be successful in your walk in Christ. So the people who you follow are very important. So let's look at this a little bit. And this is going to take a little bit I, I would like to prefer to call it discernment because God tells us don't judge the people, but rather discern. He wants us to figure out which people would be good for us to follow. And while this takes judgment to a certain level, I, I want you to be careful about judgment because judgment often can, can be judging a person, right? Judging the character, judging the moral, judging the belief, judging the, uh, judging the content of a person. But this is not what God calls us to do. God says whatever measure you use against other, me against other people, it will also be measured to you. A lot of the times, the things that we judge about other people are also places where we fall short in our own lives. So we think that by pointing them out, to other people that we're then making up for our shortcoming in our life, but that's not at all what God calls us to do. So don't judge, but rather discern. And now this is important because especially when you look at the type of leaders that God is calling us to be, the type of leaders that God is calling us to follow, he says that you have to look at their produce. You have to look at their yield. You have to look at what they are producing. So don't judge the character. Judge the outcome. Judge the action. And while you can't hold every action against them, because like I said uh, in part one, they're people. They're going to mess up. At some point, they will do something that is going to separate themselves from God because they are no less or more human than you or I, or you or me. These people are not going to be perfect. But I do encourage you to judge the fruit. You can't judge the tree for the food it produces. You have to not look at the tree, don't look at the branches, don't look at the leaves. Look at the fruit. Because oftentimes, when we look at somebody who's leading, we say, oh, their branches are too big. Oh, that tree's too big. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they're doing. It matters about the fruit that they produce. What's their message? What's their, what kind of people do they produce? Do they strengthen people? Or do they separate people? 
So let's look at this a little bit deeper. Let's flip over to 1 Timothy 1, verses 4 through 7. So 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy are Paul writing to uh, one of his followers by the name of Timothy, of course, uh, encouraging him uh, and strengthening him as a person. But um, in, in chapter 1 of 1 Timothy, uh, Paul is talking about false preachers. So I'm, I'm going to be looking at a section from that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start reading them. 1 first, first Timothy 1, verses 3 through 7. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus, so that you may command certain men not to teach false doctrine any longer nor devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. These promote controversies rather than God's work, which is by faith. The goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Some have wandered away from these and turned to meaningless talk. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about, or what they so confidently affirm. So we look at this. I'm going to kind of pick out the main points that, that God is calling us to look at in our leaders. So in verse 4, it says, Nor devote themselves to myth and endless genealogies. This is meaningless. The myth, the genealogies, they, they don't serve God's purpose, which is love on this earth. You cannot follow people who care about the meaningless. You also cannot follow people, if we read a little bit further into uh, that verse, it talks about uh, promoting controversy over God's work, which is faith, and this command that he gave is out of love. He wants to promote faith and love. So if you're following somebody who promotes controversy over faith and love, then you're following the wrong person. Then also, if we keep reading, it, it keeps talking about this meaningless talk. And this meaningless talk in the second part, because the first time it was about myth and genealogy. The second time this meaningless talk is talking about something a little bit different. Some have wandered away. Some have turned from God. So they're no longer looking to God to provide them with a message. They're, they're rather taking it into their own hands. Are the people that you are following driven by themselves or are they driven by God? This is something you need to continue to ask yourself about the people who are leading you because it's something that is the most important. If these people that you're following are not following God, then you in your, in your path are not following God either. You need to be around people who are following God and if they're just talking meaningless talk because it's not coming from God, then you're setting yourself back from what God is trying to call you to do by following other people. So the last thing is that they don't do their research. They don't learn about what they affirm. They don't, they don't get into the word. They don't, they don't dive themselves into what God is trying to do in their lives. They don't, they don't care about learning. They only care about teaching. And if you're following somebody who doesn't learn because they feel like they've learned it all, then you're following the wrong person. There's always something that God can teach us. And if they are content in the place where they are in their spiritual walk with God, then you're following the wrong person. So once again, let's go over these just real quick right before I wrap up. The meaningless talk. Talking about the myth and the genealogy over what's important, which is God's faith, God's love. Also promoting the controversy 
over God's faith and God's love. Also, the people who wander from what God is doing in our lives. And then finally, the people who are content and do not learn but only teach. So in part four, uh, I'm going to share a few stories. We're going to look a little bit deeper at uh, trying to establish uh, this, this discerning of character, um, or sorry, the discerning of the action of a person and discerning the produce of a person rather than discerning their character. Hope to see you back for part four.